How I Made a Tiny Tub, Part 10. Here we're working on the trench coat that we started in the last video. And you can see around the neck, there's a little bit of the fleece that's kind of shifted and stretched. That's fine, as long as you keep for the short fabric, the brown felt to have an eighth of an inch seam allowance so that you're not missing any of the fabric, you're, you're fine. You just wanna make sure that you're keeping the fleece at least an eighth of an inch on the other side as well. It needs to be, have a good chunk of the fabric. An eighth of an inch is enough so that it'll hold and it'll be durable. And you can see we're sewing over the stitch lines that we did in the previous video. Just moving right along, doing the second layer. Four single threads becoming two lines of stitching. And there we go. Loading the needle and pulling it through. Loading the needle and pulling it through, repeat. And then go reach your goal. And I just keep sewing. until I eventually reach the end of where I need to go. Because you have to leave this open so that you can turn the top panels there for the front out into the right side. Once we do that, you'll have to turn it from the bottom. You can see here, we're turning the panel first through the armpit hole that we left, popping it open at the seams here so that you can stick in the chopstick and then turning it through on the other side, putting the corners out making sure that the seam is not, you know, got a hole in it or something, just like quality testing. And then right there, you have to turn the panels through and then down out the bottom. If you do this, you'll see and you'll understand what I mean. It's a little, it goes by a little fast. So then the seam allowance from that little hole we turned through is turned in upon itself. You can put some clips on it, just like I did and that'll get it ready for when it's gonna be sewn down while you're sitting here manipulating everything. And I'm just testing to make sure the sides are the right length, that they are even, and that it looks good. And finger pressing everything, trying to make sure that it all lays well, as good as I can make it, because I wouldn't wanna try and iron this. When I have something I can't iron, I iron it with clips. I just put it under pressure. So here we go, you hide your knot and you just gently sew a little whip stitch down to close the hole. I'm keeping my stitches about two eighths of an inch apart. It's really not necessary to do like, in, you know, so close that they're just on top of each other. This is just to close the little hole. Nobody's going to see it. It's at the bottom of the hem. It's not under any stress at all. It's not a, a load-bearing seam, I guess you would call it. And then you do your knot and you bury your thread. And next we're gonna go ahead and sew the collar. And this you wanna start a quarter of an inch down from the top edge so that you create the same thing we did on the bottom of the trench coat hem where we turn through because we need a little area to turn this collar through. So we'll use that at the bottom. What we'll do is sew all the way around to the other side and then down onto that same side that we started on, but only in a quarter of an inch from the edge. So we'll have a, a, a gap that's very easy to turn it through. And just like the trench coat, that seam allowance that's sticking out will very easily turn under in on itself. And you can go ahead and close it just like what we did on the trench coat with some whip stitches. And so here we go. Going in a quarter of an inch. There I wasn't exactly doing a whip stitch. I'm doing something where I take a stitch and I go behind it and then in front of it. It's I'm, I'm not really sure what the name of it is. It's just something I do. It's kind of a secure stitch. It's a double secure running stitch kind of thing. And I don't do it for every one, but sometimes I would go behind where I went in and then just go 
in front of it. Right here, it's back to our running stitch, but it, right back there, it was totally the other stitch because I need to give it extra security there when you're turning it. It's just a force of habit. If something's going to break, it's going to be at either end where the stress is. And when you turn something and then you sew it with a whip stitch, it, it, that's the only area you need to worry about. Everything else is pretty tight. Especially you see we're sewing again, eighth of an inch seam allowance, doing a nice running stitch over where we've already sewn. And just keep going and going, just like the Energizer Bunny or Dory. Just keep sewing, just keep sewing. I didn't want to make this into three videos for the trench coat, so this one runs a little long. Probably the longest one in the entire Tiny Tug uh, series that I've done. So here we go. We're going to flip it through. And you can see I used the little chopstick again to poke the corners out. And just fold that in, the little seam allowance, and start whip stitching it closed, hiding the thread as best we can. Push it down either with the needle or your fingers and just get it closed. You want it to be as even as you can possibly make it because this seam here that we're doing is going to be what's sewn down against the trench coat collar, the, the part that it's supposed to lay against. That's what we're going to sew together. So we tie this knot here and we get it all figured out where the center is going to be. Push all the little corners out just to make sure and then figure out where we want the collar and we even up the thread right through it so that we can start at one end and again making sure everything is pushed out as possible get it to the center and then sew there's no knot here to hide so that makes it very easy and again uh, that needle nose pliers boy they are wonderful I have relied on them before, and I'm sure I will again. Can you see how thick that is? It's eight layers right there I'm sewing through. So you want to just keep going, making sure that you get behind the, the light brown fabric and, and make a nice clean stitch through it, and that way you're not leaving some of the brown felt to show through and there I'm checking it making sure it looks good and we'll sew back down and around to where we started okay we are almost there All we have left is to sew down the panels and the sleeves. So I'm sizing it all, making sure that this is the side I want to start on and whether or not everything looks good. I'm going to lay the sleeve over top of it again and just see which way it goes. You can see the long way is too long. So you go long way is around the armpit and around the wrist. And the short part is your sleeve seam. So you want to make sure you have it just so. And you can clip it like I do here a little bit, but it just, it's not time to do it yet. So I let it go, put it over there and said, no, nope, no, nope, let's start at the bottom. Really, that's the way to do it. It's easy to get distracted. That's really uh, 
one of the things when you're like trying to create something for the first time um it can be a little like you're juggling you know trying to think of when to do which step and how to get the best result that's always my main goal how to get the best result and how to do it effectively without like stepping on my toes in a step later you know i want to make sure that it's a, a good construction technique like, this is the best I could do. If I was actually lining it, you would be sewing it together completely different. Like, if you were trying to do it for an adult or a child or something. This isn't how you would construct it for a human to wear. Because the, the seam along the sides would be bothersome. And around the neck, it would be bothersome. But for a doll, it's fine. And no one's going to see it. Once again, if you use coordinating thread, you're all set. So then we want to go ahead and get a nice knot to start from and we're going to set with the right side of the fabric facing out it's got to be right sides together meaning right side facing the right side of the front so that what we're doing here we're taking it an eighth of an inch in from the edge and about an eighth of an inch or so from the top so you want to create a, a seam allowance for when we meet and have the sleeve ready to sew up. It's sewn all the way around and it comes back to meet itself. You should end at about an eighth of an inch before the edge on the other side. And then you can sew them together and down to create the sleeve. You'll see how we do it in a second. So here I'm just sewing along and I'm just testing it again, making sure I, I have it where I want it. And this is kind of a running stitch, kind of a, not quite, but kind of, I'm just sewing it through the three layers. I just want to make sure I catch everything in each stitch and just, it's almost a running stitch. And then I want to get it to where it's, like I said, about an eighth of an inch. I'm trying to get it to where you can see it an eighth of an inch away. And then we sew through the two sides of the seam and create what will become the end of the seam going down like we're sewing here, starting it down the sleeve to close it. I'm just loading that needle and pulling it through. And using the chopstick, I push it through to make sure that I like it. Try it on the tug. And now we're going to do the other side. Going through all the layers, trying to get it to where it'll kind of hide that knot a little better. Trying to make sure everything is even as possible. And reinforcing this bottom part. Because if something is going to break, it will be where you start or where you end your knots. That's just been my experience. Usually things don't break in the middle. Sometimes they do. I'm just using an all-purpose cotton thread here for this. You could use polyester or whatever you have. I think sometimes, though, with polyester or nylon threads, you have to kind of, like, heat seal them or they slip and the knots don't hold. I don't know. That's why I stick with cotton for, for doll making. I just find it's much more... Um, I want to say durable. I mean, I know nothing lasts forever, so as long as it's decent quality, like Coates and Clark, you know, that's fine thread from Walmart or wherever. Uh, for other uses, I use Gutterman uh, polyester, and that's fine for, for what I need it for, if you're doing clothing or other things. But for doll making or quilting, I like cotton thread. It's just a nice thread to work with. So here we go. We've got it nice and sewn. I'm going to get another thread through. All right, ready to go. Get that sleeve ready. 
And again, making sure that the nice smooth side is on the outside. It'll be right sides together with the outside of the trench as we sit here and create our little sleeve. You want to pull it up to that bottom seam so that it looks like it's one continuous seam, even though it's not. You want to try and match that as close as possible. No one's really going to look at it. So if it's a little off, don't worry about it. You just want to try and get it at a quarter of an inch from the top and a quarter of an inch from the side. That's where you want to start. And uh, that's where you want to stop when you, you sew this. So try and figure your seam accordingly. You come at it just a little bit, make sure your threads pulled all the way through and then just hold it and go through three layers and just back and forth and back and forth until you finish. Right there, I was doing that little secure stitch I was talking about. I really don't know what the name of it is. It's just something I learned. I don't know if you can really see it here, but you're coming from behind this, the, where the thread is to in front of where the thread is and then repeat. It's not really a true running stitch. You can't load the needle with a bunch of stitches with this type of th this stitch. Only one at a time. But uh, it's secure for this kind of application of putting on a sleeve. It's very hard sewing in a little tiny circle, but I would not even attempt this on a machine. There's just no way. I can't imagine how they make doll clothes, like Barbie clothes and stuff with on a machine. It must be a specialized machine. <laughs> That's all I can say. I know my machine couldn't do it. So here you go at the end. You get an eighth of an inch in. Eighth of an inch from the top. And then we're going to sew to the other piece of fabric several times there. Hang on. we got to get it right. Push it through. Hang on. And there we go. You want to do it right where you grab some of the brown felt too at least the first time before you start going down, going down the side. And then back to our running stitch. And there we go. We're done. After I sew down one little more piece. Again, if you want to do it once, if you want to do it twice, it doesn't matter on, on this, really. Twice is more secure. And here we go, poking it through with the chopstick and getting ready to put it on the tiny tug. Yay, it's done. Isn't that wonderful? Now all we have left is the hat. And that'll be the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all your comments and all the likes. Thank you so much. And if you haven't, maybe subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Take care. See you soon.